My name is Samantha Russell, and I'm from 20 Over 10, the Director of Sales and Marketing here, and I am so excited to have Jen Goldman from My Virtual COO joining us today to talk with you about how to make your website a workhorse. My uh, Virtual COO, for those of you who may not be familiar with it, was started back in August of 2007 by Jen. She's the founder, and she has worked with hundreds of independent businesses, ranging in size from two all the way to 50 employees, spanning all over the United States. And what her business does is acts as an advisor on business operations, as well as really bringing in the expertise on how to infuse technology, recalibrate your staff, and overall boost your growth and profit profitability. And it has always been my virtual COO's mission to improve the independent professional service businesses so they can help more consumers navigate through life with purpose. Jen is originally from Buffalo, New York, not far from us here in Pennsylvania. And she um, has extensive experience working specifically with financial advisors, um, advisory for management, lean process systems, uh, bank quality control, lots of expertise that we can pull from in today's presentation. She is like I mentioned before, um, often on the speaker circuit at the different conferences that many of you all attend, so you may have seen her there. And she's also been published nationally. So with that, I'd love to uh, welcome you, Jen, and thank you again for um, joining us today. And I'm gonna turn it over and make you the host. And while I'm doing that, just a couple ho housekeeping items. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to add them to the Q&A uh, section of the control panel throughout the presentation. And Amanda Larson, who's here from 20 over 10, will um, get them addressed and feed them to Jen throughout the presentation as well. All right, thank you, Sam and Amanda. And I'm gonna start my video. And if this is distracting to you, then just send a chat through and Amanda will let me know and I'll shut the video down. But I'm trying to make everything about what I'm about to talk about as real as possible. And part of that is showing your face um, and what we call building trust online. So anyway, thanks Sam for that super long introduction. <laughs> I apologize for that. And Amanda for running the show here today. So again, for anyone who's already seen me speak or knows, I prefer uh, to have an interactive sort of session. So having a webinar where no one's asking questions as I'm going through is fine, and I'm more than happy to do that, but please pepper the questions into the chat box of Zoom, um, and Amanda will cut into what I'm saying so that she can ask the questions for me to answer, All right? So I love the title um, that Sam has chosen about making your website a workhorse. And this is about technology, but really what this is about is time and energy. And so what I wanna go through today is talk about how we can spend less time and energy attracting new clients, and quite frankly, also retaining the clients that we have and attracting referral sources. And today I'm gonna focus on seven solutions I'm gonna give you the benefits of those solutions, and I'm gonna give you some examples of tools that you could look to um, for these solutions. Uh, mind you, the tool list that I give is not even close to what is out there, as you all know, but I wanted to kind of bring it to life by giving you a couple examples, all right? So we're gonna jump right into this again. All right, so here's the key elements or key solutions to talk about reducing the work and really, again, making your website your workhorse. Um, and I'm gonna read them off and go slow and then I will go through each one of these with examples. So key elements, we have web to lead. And what that is, is like a contact form on the website. A second element that's really important is your workhorse is the consumer portal. You all might call it a client portal. I'm gonna call it a consumer portal for a reason. The third is analytics. And I use Google as an example because I know everyone understands what I mean when I say Google analytics. And that's the idea that their website is telling you who's looking where and what they value. The fourth workhorse is social media. Really important to incorporate any type of social media you're doing into your website and I'll talk about the benefits for that. 
The fifth is video. The sixth is a call scheduler. And this one, as everyone knows, I'm a huge fan of. And the seventh is a call to action. So again, we have seven solutions today that can become your workhorse and reduce the energy and effort. Web to lead, portal, analytics, social media, video, call scheduler, and a call to action. All right, so let's jump into the first one. Web to lead. So I know this sounds like a little bit of techie jargon, and quite frankly, it is. I copied it from Salesforce. But the idea is, how do you get information on your viewers from the website into a lead in your systems? Okay, so that's why it's called web to lead. And years ago, there was only a couple ways to do this. Now there's many different ways. But the benefit altogether is when somebody is filling out information on your website, that information is automatically flowing into your CRM. And at this point, it might be flowing into other systems as well. But the beauty of it is you don't have to enter any information. This little workhorse eliminates that idea of getting an email that comes to your email box, or in some firms it goes to everyone's email box, and then somebody's responsible for hand typing this information in another software program. Okay. Some of the tools, and again, as I said, they're not all here. Some of the tools to consider are Redtail, web to lead that's been built by 20 over 10. Salesforce has a web to lead. Your email drip systems, have a web to lead if you use Zapier with them, which is a program that kind of copies data from one system to another for you while you're sleeping, right? Constant contact with Zapier is another and the list can go on. But again, I try to give you the big items. And I just want to take a break for a moment and ask Amanda, do you guys want to jump in and talk about that red tail web to lead at all that you guys offer? Because it is very much proprietary to your firm. Yeah, thanks, Jen. This is Samantha speaking. I can um, answer that. So um, actually, before we even focus on that, one of the things I think is really um, exciting for everyone on this call today to know is that often, as Jen kind of alluded to, what you ultimately want is whatever anyone is entering into these contact forms to go to as many of your systems as possible. So if you have Redtail as your CRM or um, wealth box or juncture, whatever you're using, you want that form, that contact info to go into that CRM and, you know, autofill as a lead. You also want it to be emailed to someone on your team so they can immediately get a notification and reach out. And then ultimately, um, it would also be really nice, right? If it could go into your MailChimp account or your constant contact account or marketing pro, whatever you're using. So um, at 20 over 10, when we set these up, we can have them go, form entries go into multiple different um, interfaces, third-party tools you'll be using. And really any webmaster you're working with, even if you're not a 20 over 10 client, should be able to do the same. Um, at 20 over 10, we have what's called a one-click integration with Redtail. So all that means is even folks who aren't working with our designers, who are just building a site themselves on our platform, they can go in, add their Redtail account information, and now it activates this, the uh, setup. So anytime somebody fills out a form, if they're a current client, it cross-references their Redtail, realizes they're already in their system, and leaves the data out. It won't add anything. So if you're collecting information for a sign-up for an event and someone's already a client, it's not going to re-add them to your Redtail account. But if they're not in your system, it will add them as a lead, and alert you that you have a new contact added. So it's a really nice, robust integration. Again, that's just taking you know those extra steps out of your day to have to cross-reference um, you know data that's coming in from multiple places. It's really it's amazing, and, and Sam and I know. <laughs> moving along in this business, it's evolved. I mean, years ago, you had that functionality. Um, 
you know, only with even Salesforce and, and 20 over 10 has built this, this great, amazing tool. And now it goes even more, as I would say on steroids, because with these tools like Zapier that are out there, that information can go into your CRM, your email drip, it can send email alerts and Redtail has automated in a way that if that lead comes in, it can automatically trigger a workflow to follow up. So it's really quite amazing how much um, staff and, and a firm can be prompted all without doing any of the work. So, yeah, absolutely. And I will just say, because somebody did ask, yeah. um, with we do have that one-click integration with Redtail, so it's just a little bit easier in the setup process. However, no matter what CRM you're using, yeah. um, if you're asking about 20 over 10 particularly, we can set up the integration manually for other CRMs. It's yeah. just that Redtail is definitely the most popular um, for financial advisors, but any yep. CRMs that you're using can be set up to operate in a similar fashion. Yep. Yep. You're right. We don't want to exclude Wealthbox and Juncture Cloud, all those others that are definitely out there. So uh, was that Tom's question? I saw a hand raised. Um, I think that was Ed's question. Okay. And Tom, you raised your hand, but you can chat if you'd like the question. Or yeah, maybe. that would be great. And somebody's asking, do we have an integration for MailChimp Investorly? So we also have a one-click integration for MailChimp. And really, the one, the one-click part of it is only really important if, again, you're setting these up on your own. If you um, either don't know how to do it on your own or want us to do it, you would just contact us and we would do it for you. Um, and that being said, somebody asked about Investorly. Any Anything you use in your business, our website can enter, um, be integrated with. So we, we, what we call it is playing nice with any third-party systems. We have no favorites. So, um, I'm, although I guess you could say Redtail and MailChimp are the favorites since we have the one book <laughs> integration. But we can integrate with anything that you have. Um, and all you'd have to do if you're a current client is submit a support ticket asking for help setting that up, and we will take care of it. If you're not on the 20 over 10 system um, and you're thinking about joining us, that would be all things of discussion points we would talk about in the initial website setup. If you're with another website provider, you should definitely be able to ask whoever either initially designed your site or who's your yeah. webmaster for help getting those set up. There's no reason why somebody shouldn't be able to help you get that set up um, yeah. and eliminate these workflows. Yeah. All right. Um, can uh, Roman, can the contact form be customized? Yes. I could go into a long length the answer, but the answer is yes. <laughs> nope. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next slide. So consumer portal. All right, so you, some of you may care or not care why I call it a consumer portal. And the fact is that I don't believe that portals are used just for clients. I believe they're used for prospects as well. So that's my belief instilled on you, which is why I call it the consumer portal. So I know there's different types of portals out there and I understand And Again, I cannot list all the tools, but let me talk about the benefits. Um, a consumer portal can automatically collect information on that person and also push that to other software programs. So one very popular example with planning centric firms is to collect to have the client log into the portal, have the prospect log into the portal, enter their credentials, logins and passwords to accounts and liabilities, and all that data that flows in can push into a financial plan, all right? And again, I list some tools to consider, but the list is, is becoming longer and longer, and for good reason. Um, again, the benefit of the consumer portal is collecting information from that prospect or from that client. It's also, as you can see, I'm showing real examples, thanks to 20 over 10 and us, between the two of us, we're giving you real firm examples where you can white label and brand it to your own firm. So you look like you actually built your own software program, which is pretty cool. Um, so again, second element, uh, that's your workhorse is the consumer portal. And this is a huge time saver if it rolled out properly, used properly and uh, marketed. Third element, online viewing analytics. And again, I call the Google Analytics because most, if not all of you can relate to that. But this is the idea that you see analytics on your website that tell you where you should be focusing your energy and time on updating. 
So I'll use myself as an example. I'm looking at my website and my analytics to understand that maybe no one cares about a certain page I built and that I've been updating. And that saves me an enormous amount of time deciding if that's the website page I'm going to continue to update, if I need to tweak it, or if I need to take it down. So another workhorse on your website is absolutely analytics. You want to know when people are coming to the website what they're clicking on and how long they're staying on those pages. Right? There are other analytics out there, again, besides Google, but by far, I don't know any web master that doesn't know how to embed that on the pages and set up your panel and dashboard so you can see that information, right? All right, another solution, social media feed. So you can see an example here of the tweets in the bottom left of the picture. And there's so many benefits to this, but the number one benefit is that if you're updating or posting something on social media, you can automatically have that show on your website, almost real time. The delay is minuscule that nobody would ever know. And that then automatically helps with search engine optimization. We always hear about, you know, and I'm sure you all get these emails about boosting your SEO. Well, one way to really do this well if you're active on social media is to bring the feeds into your website. Again, it's, an, it's a way to auto-update your website with fresh new content that you're posting elsewhere. And of course, the tools to consider are the Facebook, the LinkedIn, and the social media. Some of you maybe use Instagram. Whatever the case may be, this is something that your webmaster should be able to easily embed into your website, or maybe you have a tool that's easy to do. Okay. Um, sorry, I skipped over a question from Steve. Um, you know what, Sam, if you're on, can you answer that? Steve's commenting about how Google Analytics can be overwhelming, and I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, so Steve, uh, the short answer is we don't pull in um, your data into the 20 over 10 portal at this time. Um, hint, hint, we are working on a, a solution to consolidate the top most requested uh, metrics that our advisors are asking for. But recently, we were very pleasantly surprised, Amanda and I, when we logged into Google Analytics like we do every week. And Google actually completely redid their consumer portal that you see on your dashboard with all those top analytics that we've always been telling um, our clients to look for. Things like total number of page visits, improvement over last month or quarter, um, the top pages visited on your website, the average length of time a visitor set spends, new versus returning users. So they've taken all those top metrics that you should be paying attention to and have automatically pulled them front and center on your dashboard. So even if you never went to another page but the home page of your Google Analytics um, tracking, you'd be able to now see those main metrics. I think that happened about two or three months ago. Um, so that's a great place to start. And then um, if you go to 20 over 10's blog and you search Google Analytics, um, for those of you who are newer clients of ours, we have a ton of great resources where we've drilled down specific to advisors, the main metrics you should be paying attention to. And we've even done live webinars. You can watch all the recordings on how to cross-reference data. So if you're wondering, you know, I've written this wonderful blog post all about um, 401ks. How many people are actually finding that blog versus or in organic traffic or via maybe email marketing, social media? Um, we'll show you in those webinars how to find that data out, to find out what keywords are going to be most important um, and people are finding you the most from certain keywords, so then you can maybe write more blog posts about those topics. So there's a wealth of information on our blog about um, Google Analytics. And then finally, um, if you are a 20 over 10 client, we offer $200 Google Analytics sessions, so they're a really great value. We get your login information. We log into your account on your behalf and we spend time going through all your data. Then we cross-reference your website and we sit down with you and we do a meeting and deliver our report saying, here's some things you could do to improve your data, here's your top performing pages, here's adjustments we would suggest you make, and you can schedule that at any time. So if you really want some one-on-one -on -one consultation, that is also um, an option. And Amanda's linking to um, some more information in the chat 
um, as well. So yeah, but definitely check out that redesign Google Analytics dashboard mm -hmm. on the homepage. You guys are going to be pleasantly surprised at the top data that they've really pulled in there. That's great. And I hear uh, a little inkling of you could do a whole webinar probably just on Google Analytics. <laughs> yes, we've had, and that's what it means. Yeah. We've done a few, so they're yeah. recorded and on the blog. Oh, good. We typically do one, a new one every six months because they do roll out with new features, new metrics um, about once or twice a year. So keep your eyes peeled, everyone, for the next one. It'll probably be coming up um, before the end of the year, if not in early 2018. That's great. Thanks, Steve. That was a great question. And I don't mind admitting I needed a tutorial just as she offered the $200. That's exactly what I needed as well. So <laughs> listen, we can all, but we're in so much tech every day that it's, it's almost hard to look. So I'm so glad Google redid. And I apologize for not even having a new picture of it. it shows how often I log in. All right. So the next, um, the next solution is video. And you know, listen, I have my face on today in front of you for those that are looking at me versus the slides, and you should be looking at the slides. But, you know, video is very, it, it's not easy for everyone, and I do appreciate that. But there is no question that it heightens the trust, so you're spending less time converting those leads, that referral source that checked you out on the web, to becoming somebody that's either a client or a great referral source for you. Um, it also proves that you can speak to a group of people, uh, whether they're prospects or even clients. And so I really, I could spend all day just hammering home the reason why video is just so important to have these days. Um, there is so much noise out there and what people want is that honest a viewpoint that honest person talking with them and what better way to do that while you're sleeping because it does it over and over and you don't have to do it more than once on video um, to put a video on the website so I don't have any live examples and I didn't want to have to put that through I showing you a picture of one websites example that's worked on this with 20 over 10 but the reality is that some great websites actually have a short little video clip from each of their advisors and so in their bios when you scroll over you can actually um, see the video of of them speaking and maybe it's a short 30 second clip it just makes again the viewers feel a sense of trust and that just cuts down on the amount of time and energy a firm is taking to convert them um, there's lots of providers certainly local I'm giving you a three national providers uh, that we know of um, Andy can help um, is actually used to run an advisory firm the CEO and so he does a videography a guide vine is out there and they do the video but also other um, types of benefits with that and viral marketing so those are three of the many providers that exist out there for video um, a quick yeah uh, just a quick note on the viral marketing if you're looking for more information about viral marketing um, we actually did a webinar um, with Scott who's one of the um, execs there uh, last month and so if you go to our blog and search viral marketing you can watch that 30 minute um, recording just to see what they're all about and the packages they offer the pricing and what you get um, and he offers a lot of great tips too on how to present yourself what to talk about yeah. how long your videos should be so please check that out yeah I happen to know viral and they'll actually coach you through so they'll watch as you're taping the video and then give you tips so that's really helpful um, going back Steve and again another great question how often do the videos need to be updated and I will tell you a personal story and then you can decide how often. Um, I have a video on my website that is very old and I like how I look back then. It's still relevant. My personality and, and who I am have not changed. So I would say to you, the videos don't need to be updated often. This is not about creating a video library. I'm suggesting to start simple and just putting you and your other advisors in your office on a short video and that can sit there for years. Again, it just gives a person a sense of trust in being able to see you without meeting you yet. And that's the purpose of the video. So again, it's not about video marketing or a library. This is a just about a video of each advisor that an outside viewer can watch to get to know them before they actually meet them. Okay, so not often. All right, thanks Amanda for putting up that URL too. That's great in the chat. Okay, one of my other favorites, um, call scheduler. 
So I say call scheduler, but this could be an appointment scheduler as well. And the idea is that you could go again, here's a real example, um, to a website and you can pick a day or time to talk or meet with someone at that firm. Well, this is a huge time saver without question. On the front end, it eliminates that wasted time of back and forth emails and calls to schedule a meeting. It also eliminates manually inputting the meeting into calendar systems. And remember, while you at your firm might be manually inputting it, you're also asking the outside party to put it on their calendar. So you're giving them more work by not using this just as much as you're giving you and your staff work. And then the third piece is most firms do reminder emails. When you use a tool like a call scheduler, there is no need for email reminders. It is automatically taken care of for you by the system. And with some of these tools, you can personalize it. It doesn't have to be the generic format reminder if you don't want it to be. So three main ways that this is a workhorse. Eliminate the back and forth, email and calls to schedule. Eliminate the manual inputting uh, on the calendars, both for you and for the outside party, and eliminating sending the reminder emails. Right. Another benefit that I didn't put on here that I could say is maybe your workhorse, it's more of an energy saver, is this actually has you time blocking. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm an owner of a business, and I do spend energy thinking about bifurcating my day how much time am I going to take working with clients? How much am I, time am I going to take on marketing? How much time am I going to take to breathe? <laughs> so the reality is when you use a call scheduler, it also is saving energy on forcing yourself to time block. So that's another saving. Grace is that. Yep. Um, Steve, yes. Is the scheduler for both clients and prospects? Yes. Absolutely. There's a really great thing that you can do too when you're setting up your scheduler. Sorry to interject. No, go. go. Um, where you can choose with all of the systems. One of the first things you can make someone do when they go to click that schedule a meeting or book an appointment is are you a prospect or are you a current client? And make them uh, select so that when the meeting is coming into your calendar, you will already be um, you know, told. And some of the um, meeting schedulers, I believe, also integrate with different CRM systems so that you pull their <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you pull their data right into your to your CRM as well. Yep. yep. The integrations and the time savers are almost endless, right? And that, and that's the thing that you want to look at is you want to pick a tool that's easy to set up. And I'm going to talk about another time saver built into a couple of these tools. But she's totally right. Most of these work directly with your calendar system. Right, and then they can also also put in the information into the CRM. So if the let's say it's a client you're offering one of the activities. In this case, you can see this is an example. It says clients at the bottom in purple, and the top two green are for prospects. Okay, um, if a client clicks on that, it will actually match up the client event, the call or the appointment with the client record in the CRM, so it doesn't duplicate. One of the questions that is in the chat box, um, Jen, I think this is a great question. Lydia is asking, does using a meeting scheduler, can it lead to people who aren't really serious about scheduling meetings? And she's asking maybe if anyone on the line has any input in this, any other advisors, if you want to put your answer in the chat box so everyone can see it. Have you ever had, you know, an uptick after you've instituted this in more no-shows or, you know, maybe getting a lot of clients who aren't a good fit for your firm. Um, yeah, while we wait to hear, know. I will say from my own, you know, just boots on the ground, um, I think the number of cons related to this certainly do not outweigh the benefits from the advisors I've spoken with. They may get one or two unqualified, you know, prospects um, who are trying to schedule a meeting with them. But this also kind of goes back to a point we're not going to get into today, but we always talk about um, with a lot of passion here at 20 over 10 when we're talking with you about setting up your website is that you should make it so that people know from reading your website whether they are a good fit. So they should be able to self-qualify yes. by just being on your homepage. Um, you have to be really 
obvious about who you work with and who is a good fit. Um, and, you know, sometimes I know people will say, well, I don't want to have to put certain thresholds or minimums on there. Yeah. The more clear you can be, the better, whether it's a specific niche or a specific yeah. amount of wealth that they should have. Um, it's ultimately going to prevent anyone from wasting your time um, and you from wasting theirs as well. So I think the more clear you can be, you're not going to run into that problem as much. Um, but we have some great people commenting in the chats, Jen, if you want to yeah, see. No, I absolutely am. I'm watching it and I hope you all can see what's going on. And it's saying quite the opposite, almost zero no shows. And again, definitely the website is filtering out prospective prospects that maybe are not a good fit. So that's the commentary. We, again, we work with hundreds of firms and I will say almost every firm we work with, this is the one tool they are always implementing. And maybe it's not necessarily on their website. Maybe it's in their email signature that they offer when somebody first reaches out or when they do. But I am going to tell you, those that put it on their website are not getting, um, uh, they're not, but they are spending time on their website, just like Sam said, to really funnel in only those that are a good fit. So again, it, it is about your website having a clear message of who you'd like to work with, and they will cancel themselves out. They will not, they will not book a call. And listen, you know, I can speak you know, from again, boots on the ground from my own experience, and I'm not an advisor anymore, but the reality is, What's the worst case that somebody books a call you're, and you put a time block so they can't book and talk to you two hours later? There's a time delay. Obviously, I would expect you to go on Google search them. And if they look not scary, <laughs> there is a tactful way of canceling. So again, the rarity of that even happening, but then on top of that, there is a tactful way of taking care of that. Okay. But that's a great question, Lydia. I think one a lot of people think about. So Absolutely. Thanks for asking. Yeah. I think every firm asked me that question. So Lydia, thank you for putting that out there. <laughs> um, and also, here's another one that somebody might ask. Is this considered to be impersonal um, and not as nice as somebody, like somebody emailing in and then reaching out and, and scheduling? And I will tell you in this day and age, I don't know about you, but my banks and my doctors and my dentists and everybody else uses it. So I think we're in the age where this is not considered impersonal at all. In fact, um, it needs to be an option. Um, I always say to people, I'm married, I have a spouse. If my planner is coming to me to schedule time for a meeting, I do not want to be wasting my time doing back and forth email to figure out the best day and time. I'm probably sitting down at 1030 at night, fuzzy eyed, and that's when I want to schedule things. So I think on the, on the and that doesn't matter for all age groups, okay? Um, one more thing before I forget and move on. Um, on this, I did not put this on. This is one step deeper on benefits. But with many of these tools, there is such a t technique called collective or pooling or joining. That means if you have a firm where you have two advisors that sit in a meeting or a call with someone, you can actually set up the systems quite easily so that when somebody clicks on a link, it will look at two people's calendars and only give date times available where both people will be available in the firm. That is huge. That's huge where you have two advisors or you have a junior advisor and a senior advisor in a meeting or a phone call. So again, when, if let's say you're, you have a succession plan and you're training up younger people and you want them to listen in or you want them to be involved, this saves an, uh, so much time trying to coordinate calendars, okay? User-friendly enough for older clients. I'm gonna go back to that. Yes, this is user-friendly enough for older clients. Remember, your older clients are being asked by their banks to schedule a call if they have a question or a meeting, by their doctors, and so forth. So yes. Mm -hmm. But always, I think it goes unsaid. When you do a tool like this, and any one of these tools is like $10 a month. These are very inexpensive. Test it on yourself. And if you have a, somebody elderly in the family, test it on them. Like take it out for a ride before you implement it, okay? Okay, another solution, call to action. Actually, this is the end of our list. Um, I think most websites these days have a call to action. And most of the time it's a newsletter. And again, for most of you that might already be doing this, you understand when somebody's filling out to subscribe to a newsletter, 
that data goes instantly into the newsletter system. So it's not, it shouldn't be emailed to you. And again, MailChimp, Constant Contact, Marketo, I Contact, there are so many systems out there. Sam and her team know many more than I do. Um, again, these are items that can be embedded on the website. But you want to give those that are viewing a call to action. Maybe it's scheduling an inquiry call. Maybe it's signing up for a newsletter. Maybe it's linking to you on social media. I've chosen this particular example, call to action, which is a newsletter. Okay, and I think again, it goes unsaid. And again, what I didn't put in here, but with this call to action, if you're using like MailChimp or Constant one of these systems, you can also use Zapier to have that information go into your CRM and other systems as well. So it's gotten even better on cutting down on the workload. Right. One of the things that I'd like to just say about calls to action, um, as obviously that's something that's a huge uh, point of discussion with anybody setting up a website with 20 over 10, is that you often may have multiple calls to action. I actually wrote yeah. um, a piece in the latest FPA uh, magazine that was out in July about this because I get asked about it so often. So we usually break them down into tier one and tier two calls to action. So you always want to think about what's the most important one, right? What is your website ultimately trying to do? For some of you that have more established firms, you might not care as much about building that email list um, unless you have you know, junior advisors that you're trying to help them build their business, but maybe you're just really trying to get one to two new great clients a year. Um, and so for you, that schedule a meeting link is going to be ultimately the best, number one, most important call to action. But for those of you who maybe are, um, you know, wanting to just build up a list, you know, you're going to need to drip on people for a while. Um, you are actively blogging, producing original content. Maybe the most important one for you is really to get that email collected. So you want to you can have more than one. But what yes. we don't want is to have a million on the page of the website distracting us and we don't know what we should be doing. So you want to be able to differentiate between, you know, your goals for your site and communicate that to your designer so that your site doesn't become too cluttered and people end up taking no action. So think about the hierarchy for yourself. And this can include things like having clients start using a client portal button, having people right. schedule a meeting, sign up for an email, whatever it is you want them to do, fill out a form, um, and think about the order of importance and then make sure that your web designer knows that so they can design the site accordingly. Okay. So we've just covered seven plus solutions, web to lead, portal, analytics, social media, video, call scheduler, and call to action. So I know you guys have been asking, and I'm going to do one more slide after this. I'm going to talk about extra benefits, but are there any questions about what we've covered? And oh, by the way, the reason for the URL is there is a list of technologies in different areas, as well as outsource providers in different areas, because I talked about videographers and I talked about different tech tools. So on our website under the DIY page, there are directories and lists of each that are much more comprehensive. But beyond that, are there any questions about everything that we covered, which is a lot in a short period of time? Then um, Clark is asking yeah. what webcam you're using. He said it's very clear. Oh, good. <laughs> I only been through three of them. Um, it's a lot, you know what, you can look it up, but it's already, they don't sell it, but it'll jump you to the 900 series. It's a Logitech HD 1080p. Again, a Logitech HD 1080p as in Peter. And I think when you go on the to Amazon or anywhere, it's going to jump you to a 900 series. Same one. And it looks, um, I can't, can't show you. It looks very long. It almost looks like a wide angle camera and it sits right on top of my monitor. Um, I also do have an arm just so you guys know, because I think some of it, thank you, Sam. Um, um, I also do have an arm that comes off and I can put the uh, and it was a $10 arm 
that comes off and I can put that right in the middle of my screen with my camera on it. So if you've all noticed, I'm not exactly looking right at you guys until now when I don't need to look at my slides. If you really care to be looking literally right at the person, you can get an arm and stick your camera right in the middle of your monitor. The only problem with that is it does obstruct your view. <laughs> so for today, I chose not to. <laughs> I've learned the pros and cons. But yep. Good question. Oh, of course. Somebody's going to ask me my favorite appointment scheduler. Um, well, it's going to be pretty obvious because if you go to my website, when you click on it, you're going to see it. So I, I do have to admit Calendly is my now favorite. Uh, for any of you who followed me many years ago, it was time trade. Um, I find Calendly to be so easy to do pooling, which is that idea of having multiple people on a call. So I, I just moved to Calendly about nine months ago. I was on time trade for 10 years. And you haven't looked back. I know. <laughs> I don't. When I eliminate, I eliminate. <laughs> I write my notes of why I eliminated so I don't go back to anything old. <laughs> uh, Jen, Cynthia is just asking, what, yeah. are, what do you think of Acuity? Any thoughts on that? You know, I, I did, we did look at it. And I would say at that point, I was also looking at Calendly. I, was, I found Calendly's interface and user friendliness easier for me. Again, I've heard firms that absolutely love Acuity and they find it very easy to set up. I don't know if Acuity does pooling though, which is the idea that two people's calendars can be looked at at the same time under one link. So I'm not sure either. Yeah, that would definitely yeah. be something to check out with Acuity yeah. before you decide to go with them. Yep. And schedule once, like I compare a lot of pe people use schedule once. Schedule once to me was probably the most robust system, but I found it to be very complicated. And even firms of maybe, you know, 15, 20 people, I still think Calendly is at the right level of learning or even like time trade enterprise where schedule once to me was, let's say you had a 50 or hundred person firm. That's the type of system you'd have to use. Yeah. Great feedback. Okay. Keep coming with the questions, but I'm going to bring something kind of funny and date myself with a little 80s. <laughs> so I wanted to kind of wrap this up. And of course, Sam can do the final wrap up if she'd like. But I wanted to wrap this up because we just covered seven major solutions. And I think sometimes I know when I walk away from that, I, I don't even know where to start. And, and, I, and I forget why I, I might have even been in a seminar or a session. And let, let me just talk to you about this and give you a little catchy thing to remember in your head. So I remember way back when, and I just had to watch it again with my kids, um, E.T.'s amazing finger, this like glowing finger, and this concept of that E.T. always wanted to find home. And home meant to him and for all of us a place that was safe, a place that took worries away, that, you know, really helped um, us. And I also, as I watched the movie, I realized well, all of E.T.'s friends were spending an exorbitant amount of energy and time, like biking up hills and down hills and figuring out how to get E.T. home, all right? I want you to think of your online viewers like E.T. When they come to your website, they are trying to find home. They're trying to find a place and people that are going to get them to a place where they're comfortable and they feel they can trust and where their worries go away. And what you don't want when your viewer comes to you is to use a lot of energy to find you and to find home. And frankly, you don't want your staff spending a lot of energy getting that person to find you and to get home, okay? This is really about reducing the work for the outside viewer and for your people. It's, so that's, it's also about accessibility. Like, I don't know if you, you know, if you go through these tools from scheduling and video and so forth, you're more accessible and you're transparent. You're predictable. People kind of feel like they know where you live and where to find you, where home is. You're communicating to them, you know, that, that feed of, of social media. That's outward communication, right? Well, what does that do? By doing all of that, you're earning trust more quickly and easily. And this is the trick. You want to earn the trust of those outside viewers more quickly and easily with less work. Notice earn trust, ET, okay? You want to spend less energy and time, ET. Complete coincidence. So if I could give you anything <laughs> to take away today, whether it's that cute picture of ET, 
but the ET, the energy, the time, and the earning trust, that is what this is all about, okay? If you can accomplish that, just pick one of these tools and really embed that in, all right? Or if you already have one, add another. This is what this is all about, reducing the work, being transparent, earning that trust, okay? Are there any other questions? While we're waiting for people to send in the last questions, I know we're going to get asked this. I've already gotten a couple emails in my in binging on my phone while we're still in this uh, presentation from current clients. So if you are a 20 over 10 client or potential client, yep. um, if you're a current client, you have a website, it's up mm -hmm. and running, and you're thinking, hey, I'd like to take advantage of some of these and integrate them now, I'm ready to go, um, you first just need to set up whatever you're going to use. And then you just need to contact support, which you should all know how to do. You just click that submit a ticket button from the support site or the help button on your website dashboard. Um, the email is support at 20over10.com. And let us know what you want to integrate, how, where on your website. Just give us the specifics. You know, I have a contact form or I want to add a contact form, collect name, email, phone number. I want it sent to my email and I want it to be integrated to my red tail. Um, whatever it is that you want set up and then our support team will email you back to get your login credentials or the embed code, whatever it is they need to get it set up for you. So easy enough is that um, if you are a 20 over 10 client. So please, um, you know, reach out to support, ask those questions. If you are a 20 over 10 client and you're, you still have some questions about which system to use or anything like that, then I would suggest emailing hello at 20 over 10.com to have that conversation um, before requesting the support ticket. So just to cover that, because I know we're going to get yeah. asked that. No. I'm glad you covered that. And I really, I mean, let's, Sam, your crew, and I'm just going to speak freely here, but 20 over 10 absolutely gets the power and the time savings of all this and how this all works. So it's for you to acknowledge which tool you want and then go to them with that. And from there, I would say it couldn't be easier um, and let it come to life with their help. Thank you, Jen. I appreciate yeah, that. No, we, it's it's been such a pleasure to have you today. And I'm sure we'll get more questions um, after the fact. So yep. if there's any specific to you, we'll make sure to forward them to you. Um, okay. And everybody is saying thank you coming in through the Q&A and the live chat. And I want to, you know, <laughs> say that again. We, we couldn't have been happier to have you with us here today. No. And uh, thanks again for a great presentation. And everybody, again, we will be posting this recording on our blog and emailing it out to everyone who registered. So um, I know a lot of you are asking about that. We will make sure to get that in your inbox here shortly. So thanks again, Jennifer. Have a great rest of your day. And thank you everyone for joining. Right. Bye guys.